Buzz God greetings. Right now I have an opening to proceeding parts that will show a dialogue I had with two women out front of a church. And there was one woman that took the lead, okay? And she was modestly dressed, which I appreciate. And she was emboldened, which allow me to say this on the behalf of women. I think if a woman is going to approach a man of God, there has to be a level of boldness. I mean, yes, she must remain quiet to refrain from mockery and, of course, sin. But there is a level of boldness there. I mean, there are women that even approached the Son of God, okay, and did receive. So we have to be in appreciation of things that are correct, all right? Now, there's obviously things that we will not appreciate about the way in which she handled things. And I think it was based off of pretense and some other things that I'll talk about here shortly. She, to start with, gives the common confession that we're used to. We're all sinners. We sin because we're human. And I, of course, go with the confession of the scriptures that we're called to be saints and being human is good. And... She stood in the sin of unbelief. She didn't believe it. Not just about me. I mean, I just gave what the scriptures say. But she st stood in the sin of unbelief. She didn't believe it. So that's how it started. Now, it moves forward to, you know, this part and place in the conversation, the turning point, John 8. And I think I did an adequate job of explaining how, you know, of course, you know, being human is good and all these different things. And, you know, we go to John 8 and I talk about how these religious sinners were convicted by their own conscience. And she starts going into the bag of tricks at this point. She says, well, I think that was a spirit. Okay. Now, allow me to say and grant, of course, the spirit does reprove the world of sin. Yes. Though, why would the spirit use their conscience, if their conscience is inherently sinful, it would not be a device to use against someone. It does say their conscience. I mean, that's in the text. So again, allow me to reiterate, if the conscience is inherently sinful, then why use the conscience? Okay. You see what I'm saying? He wouldn't have any reason to convict if this is the way it works anyway, because it's already a messed up conscience. And if he's going to convict, why use something that is so determinant and negative? Whereas if the conscience is inherently good and they're being convicted of their own and the spirit adds to that, strengthens it. I mean, of course, you have Jesus Christ who has the spirit without measure in the midst. Then, of course, that is what makes sense. And that's, you know, and I'm only paraphrasing things, but I mean, this is the route I'm going here, of course. So she now goes deeper. I think at this point she knows she's being outdueled. She's in trouble. All right. So she goes deeper into the bag of tricks. Now, allow me to explain this. We as saints, we do chess style strategy. I mean, we have just this example, Jesus Christ. He's using interrogative convicting. Okay, the one that doesn't have sin, cast the first stone. You see that? So we do things like that. What sinners can do is they can play the poker style, like the bluffing and things. All right, so we don't do those sort of things. Now, she says, and this was kind of a shock, but she says, what does it say in the original language? This is where she's going. Okay, now, based on what I just said, we have to be honest with what we say. I didn't say anything dishonest to her. I have read the whole New Testament in Greek, so I have not said anything dishonest to her. Okay. And I'm not going to dull my wisdom. I'm not going to make it brighter than it is. I'm only a beginner at the language. You know, in fact, in English, I'm only a beginner. You know, I mean... I'm not a college graduate. I don't always know where to put the commas. 
you see what I'm saying? So the prevailing here is going to be by the Spirit of God. We know what is written. God takes the base things of this world to confound the wise. Okay, so this is not the priority. However, though, she picked the wrong person to say that. Because when I say, go get the Greek Bible, I'll read it. I'm saying something honest. God's going to call her out, you know, because if she was not bluffing, then she can now partake in the discussion of actually the Greek, the actuality, the original writing of John. And all you're going to end up finding is it's convicted by their own conscience. I mean, that's what you'll end up finding, but be that as it may. So that was rather interesting. Okay, so we get through with that. Now, as the conversation starts shifting, you know, and it starts to conclude, she does say some good things. I mean, she is one to uphold what is written by Paul 1 Corinthians 5. She's saying the right things, okay, about this and confronting. Now, she leaves herself stuck, though, because she's in a place that everyone sins because they're human. And if everyone sins because they're human, how can you you know, come against sin, if Jesus says your eye has to be cleansed out first, and, I mean, does not the Spirit actually cleanse the eye? I mean, and all these different things, and if he does, then you need to stop sinning, and then go tell other people about their sins. These are two things people don't do. So, in her line of saying what is correct, I charge her, then if you know what is correct, go by this conviction and do it. And you know that there's sin there, okay? And that's what she started with, you know. And then she acts like, well, there's not. I don't know people that are fornicating. Okay, so I said, what amongst you and your friend here? You guys say you're sinners. Why don't you guys get that right, you know, and fix that? Now, she says this at the end. Now, she said it. She's like, right now, I'm not in sin. Exactly how she said it, but you can hear it. Now, I really caught her here. All right. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm saying this because this is the way we do things to try to get people saved. Okay. I caught her on this because I said, well, then if this is the case, then your nature is not holding you back. Being human is not holding you back. Now, let me give this to her here. Okay. And I joy over this for the joy of the truth. Okay. Is that she said she has to think about that. And that she even admits that it was a trap. Okay. And she said that in a respectable way because she knew what happened. She knew where that conversation took her. Now she's going to have to deal with that day in and day out. Or sear herself to this. Because this is the truth of the gospel. Okay. And I'll give her credit for that. She acknowledged it. She didn't mock it. She then do something foolish, okay? So, to conclude, okay, what did she do? She was crafty, okay? What did she find me with? She found me with the truth. Was I crafty? Yes. What did I catch her with? Guile. Now, so you have to understand that, okay? We do that, all right? And Why? So that they will go away convicted by their own conscience. So in Jesus' name, bless God.